Um, so what is Kundalini? Kundalini is a type of yoga practice um, that is basically a practice of awareness. Um, it's, and it's about using, being in that state of awareness and using the special dynamic um, technology of Kundalini to experience your soul. So like what Maya was saying, how it's like the closest thing to God, it actually, what it is, is the closest thing to yourself. And it's really, when we're born and we come into this world, it's like we're part of that oneness and then we come into our bodies and we're, we're, we feel alone. So we look outside of us always for um, love, acceptance, reassurance, and we're constantly looking throughout our lives and even the way society has trained us to be, to always be looking outside of us for, for feeling, to feel good, basically. So what Kundalini does is that it brings, it brings our attention back inward and it has, and it, and it creates the most profound connection between us and our soul. And um, it teaches us how to feel good on the inside without having to need anything from the outside. So like without having to need that relationship, without having to need, you know, drugs or alcohol or without having to need anything. It's just you and you. And it's the most empowering thing that you can possibly have knowing that you have that strength and you have that power. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about Yogi Bhajan. He's the one that brought Kundalini to the West in the 60s. And the reason why he brought it is like super interesting because it's so relevant to what's happening right now on Earth is he said that during what's happening now at this time, there's going to be a shift in consciousness and we're going to go from a Piscean age to an Aquarian age and the people and you, we're going to need to have tools in order to be able to not only survive in this new world, but also be able to thrive. And what the Kundalini Yoga does through different technique, techniques, like, um, I'll get into them in a moment, but what, what Kundalini does is that it, cre it helps you create a very strong physical mental and emotional body so that you can cut through any anything that doesn't serve you and um and so what are some of the techniques that we use um we use sound codes which are mantras with different you know different sound frequencies and what's really interesting is that like in i don't know if you guys are familiar with the kabbalah is anyone familiar with the kabbalah kind of a little bit so the Kabbalah was kept secret for thousands of years. And so was this Kundalini teachings. It was passed on from like master to student and master to student, but it was never given out to the public until Yogi Bhajan brought it to the US. Um, and the different types of techniques that we're using is um, we use um, mantra, which is basically like sound code frequencies. Um, and we use also mudras, which is like the different positioning of our fingers. And each finger represents a planet and each finger represents a different meridian channel. So it's like, you're really working with the energy of your body. And which brings me to the chakras. Um, and so what Kundalini's purpose, what you're, what it's, what's it really supposed to bring to you is a balance is to help you balance your chakras and to have them aligned and to have them open so that you can be a vessel of, um, and, and, and create kind of like this clear channel to allow like, you know, our, our innate wisdom, intuition, um, information, like everything that we have access to if we're centered and aligned to have that. And we also use a lot in Kundalini, the, um, the breath work and the movements. It's really about being aligned in our truth and aligning our chakras. And, and when our chakras are out of balance, like if our, if our second chakra is out of balance, it'll manifest in our everyday life and we'll be able to see the effects of it. So let's say like if I have my second chakras not aligned, 
then um, that I might be expressing it by being addicted to sex. Okay, I'm just gonna use that as an example, right? So how will that manifest in my life? Well, I will be making choices in my life in order to fill this need that I have because my, my second chakra is not aligned. But what's the beautiful side of having an aligned second chakra is that it's our creative force. It's our creativity. It's like, it's, it's, so it's really, what's beautiful is like, I can go back to the mat and I can say to myself, okay, well, if this is showing up in my life, then this means that I have an imbalance in this chakra and I can literally do specific mantras, poses, meditations, kriyas. I can specifically do things that will help me release the blocks in that chakra in order to rebalance it. And it will shift my, my, my real life experience. And that's what the magic is of Kundalini. <laughs> so when we begin um, Kundalini, we begin with tuning in with the Adi Mantra. And the Adi Mantra, the words are Ong Namor Guru Dev Namor, repeated three times. And Ong is the divine principle. It's, um, and Namor means I bow. And Guru Dev means to the divine wisdom and the teacher within me, I bow. So you're basically bringing your palms together, rubbing them together and inhaling them into your heart center. And just to exhale, making sure that your seat bones are firmly planted on the ground and your spine is straight and your neck is slightly tucked, allowing the channel to be open to the crown of your head. And you're taking another deep breath in and exhale. And take another deep breath in and exhale. And I want you to imagine that there's a red light from the base of your spine, from your root chakra, and it's opening up and it's sending light into the center of the earth. And I want you to imagine that there's a string being pulled from the crown of your head and your crown is opening up, allowing the light from the universe to come into your body. And keeping your eyes closed, and focusing your drishti, your attention between your eyebrows with your third eye. We're gonna inhale deeply. And exhale completely. And we're gonna inhale to tune in with Om Namo Guru Dev Namo three times. Inhale deeply. Om Namo Guru bow your head to your chest just allowing an intention to arise from your heart or something that you want to invite today's practice what you want to release and on the count of three I'd like you to whisper it out into the quantity whisper it out into the what was that? So okay. I just repeat what you said. Someone came in and they weren't muted. So just um, just.
just repeat what you said. So from which parts? So keeping your eyes closed. Out loud, yeah. Bowing your head to your chest, submitting your mind to your heart, to the wisdom of your heart center. I want you to allow an intention to arise from your heart. Something that you'd like to receive, something you'd like to let go of. And on the count of three, I'd like you to whisper it out into the quantum field. One, two, three. And you're going to inhale. And you're going to release your hands onto your knees. We're going to begin a Sufi grind. So making sure you're inhaling as you're opening up your chest, coming forward, and you're exhaling as you're curving your spine, tucking your pelvic forward, drawing your navel into your back, and inhaling as you come forward, and exhaling as you go back. Keeping your eyes closed the whole time because we're really interested in what's happening inside us. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. This is called a Sufi grind. Inhaling forward, exhaling back, keeping our neck slightly tucked. We're opening our chest as we come forward and we're opening the back of our heart chakra as we go back. Creating a kind of dynamic breath. Opening up our hips, massaging all our internal organs, our kidneys, our spine. Keeping your eyes closed, keeping your focus between your eyebrows. You're gonna inhale to center. And you're gonna exhale, beginning rotation in the opposite direction. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Awakening the Shakti energy, the creative energy at the base of our spine. Really allow yourself to hear your breath. And you're gonna inhale to center. Holding your breath, squeezing your mother bend, your rectum, sex organs, and navel. It's butta again, squeezing, drawing the, the energy up your spine, through your throat chakra to the crown of your head, feeling the energy contained in your body. And exhale. And I want you to come into onto all fours. I can't see everybody. Why is that? Uh, well, just click on gallery view and you'll be able to see everybody on the top right. Okay. Okay. Hi, Lucy. Okay, so we're coming on to all fours. 
We're making sure that our elbows are stacked underneath our shoulders, our wrists are stacked underneath our shoulders, our knees are hip distance apart, and our knees are stacked underneath our hips. And we're gonna begin with a cat cow. So we're inhaling as our throat opens up and our chest opens and our, and our spine drops down. And then as we exhale, we're drawing our chin into our chest and our navel into our spine. And we're inhaling as we open and exhaling as we close. And again, you wanna use a very dynamic breath. You wanna keep your eyes closed. You wanna focus your attention between your third eye. Rachel, when you're opening, you're feeling your, your neck open, opening your throat chakra. And then as you go down, you're breathing, drawing your chin into your chest. Good job. You just allow yourself to feel your spine becoming more fluid. Allow your breath to deepen. As all poses, as we show up on the mat is how we show up in life. So creating more fluidity in our spine allows us to become more flexible in life. This pose also stimulates production of collagen in our face. So if you're looking for that radiant shine, And just for the last 30 seconds, keep on moving more dynamically. Inhaling up and exhale as you push your body down, bringing your bum onto your heels, stretching your arms out in front of you and your forehead onto the ground. And I just want you to stay in this position and I want you to observe your body. I want you to observe your body, observe your breath. Observe how differently you feel from before to now. And I want you to inhale, coming up into sitting in easy pose. You're gonna bring your arms onto your shoulders. You have a little space here. Put your thumbs in there and wrap your arms around your shoulders. And we're gonna inhale as we twist our body left. 
And we're gonna exhale as we twist it right. Keeping our eyes closed, focusing between our eyebrows at the third eye. And we're gonna move as dynamically as we can. This exercise, this pose actually releases fear from our kidneys. So it's a perfect pose to be doing right now. I want you to really allow yourself to just let loose. Allow yourself to get dizzy. Allow yourself to let go. Allow yourself to not be in control. Good job guys continue don't stop don't stop keep your arms up Maya this pose cultivates energy in our heart chakra Inhale to center, squeezing your mula bund, holding your breath, squeezing your rectum, sex, and sex organs and navel, drawing the energy up your spine to the crown of your head, squeezing, and exhale, bringing your arms up to 60 degrees. We're gonna bring our fingers into the pads of our hands, keeping our wrists straight, and we're gonna point our thumbs up, to the sky, our thumbs are our ego. And we're gonna, gonna be high mic. We're gonna begin a breath of fire. Does anyone, has anyone not done this before? Has anyone not done breath of fire? Okay, so a breath of fire is like this. You begin panting like it's like a dog. <sighs> Drawing in your navel on the exhale. And then after you've gotten that down, you're gonna close your mouth and you're gonna bring the air through and in and out of your nose. So it'll look like this. I'm just trying to see how you can see my stomach. It's gonna feel a little bit weird in the beginning, but just go with it. So. Bringing our arms up, uh, closing your eyes, focusing your eyes between your eyebrows, making sure your spine is straight, your chest is open, your shoulders are rolled back, your arms are at 60 degrees, your thumbs are pointing up into the heavens, and you're gonna begin a breath of fire, unless you're pregnant on your first three days of your moon cycle. So. And as the time goes, your mind is gonna to try to take control and tell you that you can't do this, that it's too hard, that you don't have what it takes. And that is your mind trying to control you. And it's just a story. And what you have to do is you have to tell your mind to shut up. And then you can sit here for hours and nothing's gonna happen. And your arms are not gonna fall off. I spent a lot of time in Kundalini telling my mind to shut up. If you feel like you need to bring your arms down, you can bring them down and just visualize that you're doing it. But if you can stay up, try to stay up. You feel your arms coming down, inhale them back up. Imagine that you have, I don't know, angels holding up your arms. Stay with the breath, focus on the breath. Don't focus on anything else. Allow the breath to help you push through, to carry you through.
Inhale. Bringing your thumbs to touch. Your thumbs to touch at the top of your head, holding your breath, squeezing your mula bun, drawing the energy up your spine to the crown of your head, to your arms, to the tips of your fingers, straightening out all eight fingers, holding your breath, feeling the energy, and exhale, slowly bringing your arms down, allowing them to move through your electromagnetic field, through your auric field as you touch the floor with your fingers. And then you're gonna inhale them back up, bringing the back of your palms to touch, and you're gonna exhale them back down. And we're gonna continue. Inhaling up, exhaling down. We're clearing the energy in our electromagnetic fields, in our auric fields. We're cultivating energy in our heart center. Inhaling up for the back of our palms to touch, exhaling as our fingers come touching the floor, grounding our aura. Inhale all the way up. Hold, squeezing the bun, rectum, sex organs, and navel, drawing the energy up our spine, to the crown of our head, to the tips of our fingers, and exhaling everything back down, interlacing the fingers behind our back. I'm gonna come into rock pose, and everyone can come into rock pose. We're gonna interlace our fingers behind our back. If someone needs a bolster, or if someone wants to stay in easy pose, they can, whatever is comfortable for them. And we're gonna just keep our, our index finger pointed out with the rest of our fingers laced in Venus Mudra. And we're gonna open our chest, rolling our shoulders back as we inhale. And as we exhale, we're gonna come down, bringing our foreheads to the ground. opening up our hearts and we're bowing to our grace. We're bowing to our divinity. We're bowing to our courage. Really allowing your forehead to hit the floor, stimulating our third eye. And then we're gonna inhale up, bringing all of our hands into a lock, interlacing all the fingers, bringing our arms up as much as we can. And we're just gonna close our eyes and begin a breath of fire.
Try keeping your arms up as much as you can. Keeping our chest open. Inhaling deeply. Holding your breath, drawing your arms back and up as much as you can, squeezing your mullet bun, rectum, sex organs, and navel, holding your breath, squeezing the energy up your spine to the crown of your head. Hold. And slowly exhale as you're releasing your hands very, very slowly to the front of your body. I'd like you to come into a meditative state bringing your left and right hand in front of your heart center to create almost like a ball, feeling the pulsation of the energy between your left and right hand. This is the energy of healing. This is the energy of love that we've cultivated from our heart center. This is your power. I want you to play with this energy as if it's a ball. Feeling the pulsation between the left and the right hand. And using this energy of love and healing I'd like you to place your hand somewhere on your body that you feel needs attention and love. You can place it on your chest. You can place it on your forehead if you feel like you need to stop thinking so much. Maybe on your arms or your shoulders. I just want you to take this moment, this opportunity to thank this area and all the love that you normally give out to the world, to your family, to your friends that you've cultivated now in your heart center that is now pulsating through your arms and out your palms. I want you to give back to yourself. Just taking long, deep breaths. With every breath, filling the space with more love, more gratitude. More light. And I'd like you to slowly move, for those of you that haven't, slowly move your left hand above your chest, over your heart center, and your right hand over your left. And I really want you to take this moment to greet yourself. And tell yourself that you love, say, I love you, thank you. I love you. Thank you. And I'm proud of you. And I'd like you to take this opportunity to think of all the things that you're grateful for. And 
Maybe it's your loved ones. Maybe it's something in nature. The sun, the clouds, the beach. Maybe it's your own courage. And I'd like you to take this opportunity to send out a wish. On the count of three, I want you to whisper out a wish into the quantum field. A desire, something that's in your highest good. One, two, three. And you're going to inhale deeply and exhale, bringing your arms down to your lap and just taking a few more deep breaths. I'm going to rub the palms of our hands together. Inhaling them back into our chest. And we'll close today's practice with a long suck and a short numb. So inhale deeply. Sigh. Nam. Bow your head to your chest. Submitting your mind to the wisdom of your heart. Knowing that whatever is meant for you will always find you. And Satnam. Thank you.